Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and as you can see in our office, we have a robot arm. I want to introduce you to Tony. Tony, you're the co-founder of a U Factory. You guys make robot arms, yeah. is that right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, you previously, you guys launched uh, via a very successful crowdfunding campaign, the uh, the U Arm yeah, series of arms. Uh, I think I believe there's like a Swift model and a Pro model. Uh, some of our friends, like Simone, has actually used your company's robot arms. But this looks way more complicated and industrial. What is, what is this? Uh, this is the latest product, XM7. So uh, several years ago, we made a U-Arm and the U-Arm Swift Pro. It's just like a desktop robot arm mm -hmm. and for the makers and for different kinds of the funds. But now, this kind of robot is much more useful than that one. Yeah, I remember the, the U-Arm Swift. It was yeah. you know, more desktop, like, like you said, uh, and a lot of it was, was four axis. Right? Yeah, for access. And a lot of it was uh, giving users precision. Uh, the pro, very precise in terms of the repeatability of the yeah. actions. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this, it called the, it's called the X-Arm 7, so that leads me to believe seven, seven axes of motion. Yeah, seven means seven axes. It's like two times much, uh, more joints than the U-Arm Swift Pro. So it's mu much more agile and much more powerful than the U-Arm Swift. I, I can't even wrap my head around what seven axes actually means. Can you, can you point out where here, where are these seven axes? Yeah, yeah, of course. You can see the, the, the first joint, second, mm -hmm. third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and seventh. Ah, okay, and with that many joints, you can do very complicated moves in and out of small spaces, for example. Yeah, actually, seven axes is like, just like a human's arm. Mm. So it's very, very agile. Like, just imagine how you use your arm to grab different things in different places. Right. Yeah. So when you're designing this mechanically, using that analogy, like my arm, for example, I can also reach very far, but also have the strength to hold things out very far. So when you're designing something like this, What's the load capacity and, and can it maintain that? For this arm, it's, it's like a 3,500 uh, 3, uh, 3, grams. So for the payload. about 3.5 3, 3. kilograms. Okay. Um, and 3.5 kilograms, and in terms of the precision, uh, if you're going to program in a series of actions, uh, it can repeat that to, to how much precision? Like 0 0.1 millimeters. Of precision, yeah, that's that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, because it's based on an industry robot design, so mm. it, it's much, it's all still powerful than uh, compared with a com uh, industry robot, and also the payload. But uh, actually, we designed this robot to make to want to make it uh, af much more affordable for the for different people. So I know now the labor cost is uh, really high in different countries, especially in the developed countries. Mm -hmm. So we want to create something affordable for different people, especially for small uh, companies. Right, right. I mean, this is definitely more than just a consumer. It looks like more than a prosumer tool. It's for small businesses, if it's yeah. small batch manufacturing, if they're laying down boards or something. And in that industrial robot range, I know they can go up to over $10,000. Yeah, so yeah. you guys are launching this at, at what price? Uh, less than one, one, 10000 Less than ten thousand. Yeah, US dollars. Interesting. Uh, so I'd love to see this uh, in action. Uh, how does this actually uh, move? What's the the process of getting this? Yeah, I, I I like to show a very simple demo to let you know how it moves. Yeah, can we take a look? Never gets old seeing robots move like that. It's it's very organic that yeah. movement. For industry robots, we can never imagine we put them on a, on a small desk mm -hmm. and make it move. Yeah, and this is just clamped in. As you can see, it's just on our table right now. Uh, so you have mounting points there. What you can't see off camera, uh, I see control box underneath, and of course yeah. an emergency stop switch. Yeah. Um, in, in terms of designing a robot like this, um, one you know you want seven axes. Uh, do you experiment with different types of motors? Are these all the same motors? Uh, actually, there are three different types. Ah, okay. So for the uh, a small, medium, and a uh, bigger one. Mm. So for different uh, different sizes of the motor, it uh, it had different torque mm -hmm. for different joint because right. uh, like the joint here, it needs more power to right, make right. this arm move. Right. And you also, know, just like the arm, the points where it's going to bend the most. You want the most torque and also the less least amount of like backlash, for example. So it's yeah. going to stay rigid. Yeah. So for the for the reducer, we use the harmonic drive. 
Okay. Yeah, from the Jap made in Japan. So mm. it's back zero backlash, and it's like the industry standard. Yeah. I, I, can we play that animation again? I'd love to see it move again. Just to, okay. To just show the, the zero backlash. Show again. This is like a test motion mm. for a robot before before shipping. <laughs> And then the, I see six, the seven axes here is of course the N, and I saw there are pins there, so imagine you have different attachments. Uh, yeah, I know yeah. the U-arm had multiple attachments. Uh, describe what attachments can you put on this? Currently we create the two kinds of the tools, like the gripper and the suction cup. And uh, here I can, I can show you the gripper. Okay. Yeah, for this one, it's much more powerful than the sweet one. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. It's almost like a two finger of, the, of your hand. Mm. And later I will show you the functions here. Yeah, so well, let's, let's take a break and get this installed on so we can see what this robot can do with the gripper. Okay, a little bit of a movie magic, a little bit of time has passed. Now Tony, you and your engineer here, you guys programmed this motion. So it d does take a little bit of programming mm -hmm. to create to, uh, an action here. And I noticed looking over his shoulder, uh, you have a graphical user interface um, to, to move each of these axes. So is it just pressing step by step how, how you want it to move? So here we, are, we were offering the GUI, pro, uh, GUI interfaces. So in this interface, you just drag a different joint to different places mm. and to make sure this position is, is, is where whether you, want, uh, you want the machine to move there. So then you can uh, store it and then the, the, the software will store it and uh, uh, you can um, store like different several 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 points and then make them into um, into one motion Got it. so here we want to show us a, a simple demo that uh, the, the robot arm use the gripper to grab a cup sure yeah sure all right so let's play this simulation. action And there it goes, it grabbed it. It's very cool. I noticed that as this was moving, it was one step at a time, one axis, one axis, one axis. But can you have them operate simultaneously as well? Uh, yeah, of course. But now for, the, for uh, one by one will be easier. Mm, yeah, mm. Because so part of that is the over time you experience, you'll learn which ones to start moving together, how many axes you want to move at once. Yeah. But in theory, all seven could be moving at once. Um, yeah, we can we can do that, but f f even for the uh, beginners, it will be much easier, I think. Yeah, for one at a time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, Tony, can you explain to me uh, this feature now? This your force feedback feature? Because we just uh, talk about the GUI, and mm -hmm. we think we type the code uh, or uh, entering a different number or coordinates. It's it's still very difficult. Yes, yeah. So we created this kind of the future to feature to make this robot more much more easy to access. Mm. So uh, now we add the, like the feedbacks in, into each joint, so that each joint can uh, sense your your force outside the force from outside. So when they, fo they, they they can feel that and they can move with with your hand, very very smoothly. Mm. So you can, you can So this is try. to position the robot where you want to position it every yeah. joint. Yeah. So even like the first joint here. Yeah. Okay. Two right here. Three. Yeah. Four, four. Five. And five. And six. And then seven would be right there. Oh there it goes. Yeah. So this lets you kind of position it where you want to position it. So if I yeah. wanted to get close to yeah. here, I can do that. But then does it also send the signal back to your computer and let you know this yeah, is the position course. so you can record when this position? When you click position. the record, it will uh, get the position and so store it. That will lock your position as opposed to hitting the button over <laughs> and over just to incrementally move. Yeah. And interesting. With, the, with, the, with this kind of the feedback, it can make the, um, make the uh, position much more uh, precise, I think. Mm -hmm. Because if there are a very big force to stop you to move it, then you will use a very big, right. you will try very hard. Right, and right. it makes you very hard to move to the place, place you want. And yeah, this is relatively, is this something you can adjust as well? So this is looser 
or is this the setting for uh, for how firm this is? You mean lock some yeah, joints? Yeah, yeah. You can lock. You can lock. Yeah, some of course. Content. Later we will explore that. Yeah. All right. So half of it is on the software side and, and yeah, developing so. an interface for the control box. Um, once you've solved the hard part of making these motors <laughs> all work together, very very cool. Uh, so this looks like a prototype. It's of course uh, in development. What's the plans for launching this? Uh, we like we would we, like to launch it in December. December, okay, yeah. before the end of 2018, like you said, under 10,000 USD. 10,000. And it will be under your website or a crowdfunding campaign. You, you guys are using like a Kickstarter for it as well? Yeah, yeah. All right, very cool. Well, we can't wait to see this in the field and what people can do with it. I love looking at these robot arms. I had a lot of fun with the, the U arm, and this is now the X arm. Thank you so much, Tony. It's nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you, Norman.